and the mortgage backed securities first of all uh, it's better to understand uh, the prime characteristics of the mortgage itself and after that how these mortgages are translated into mortgage backed securities is something which we will look at so whenever we talk about uh, a mortgage it's basically a loan that i am taking for purchasing a real estate a loan to purchase a real estate it could be residential or commercial any purchase if i am doing it with a loan and keeping the same real estate property as the collateral that is what we are calling as a mortgage so against that loan it is required that the borrower should make a series of payments probably a uh, comprising of interest and some portion of the principal the borrower is required to make a series of payments over the over the period of the loan and in case the borrower defaults the lender will have the right to have a claim on the collateral that is what is a typical characteristic of a mortgage loan and in this process uh, whatever the interest rate that is being charged is what we typically call as a mortgage rate i mean the interest rate on a loan probably you can use that same word but otherwise uh, it's better to use a word called mortgage rate and the most common form of mortgage which we see is the residential mortgage for which <coughs> for which uh, the bank or any lender they assess the credit worthiness of the borrower and give a loan against which they get the that particular underlying residential real estate as the collateral and uh, generally the pre the payment terms that are associated with a mortgage loan result in a fixed rate level payment fully amortized mean the mortgage rate for the entire period even if i have borrowed for a 30 year period the general scenario is the interest rate for the entire 30 years is fixed every month every month the investor is supposed the borrower is supposed to make a, a, an equal amount repayment as a part of uh, the loan and by the time <coughs> the 30 years come up by the end of the 30th year no loan is outstanding that is what is called as fully amortized whatever the principal that you have taken that is spread fully over the 30 year period itself right these are the three important characteristics that we see with any typical <coughs> mortgage loan the interest rate is fixed the payments are uniform for the entire 30 year period and fully amortized by the end of the 30 years there is nothing else that is outstanding to be paid this is the most common component which means uh, when i am doing an equal uh, repayment there is some amount of principal and some amount of uh, interest that would be uh, computed in the process and allocation of uh, the total prepayment amount to the principal as well as the interest can be different for different periods now let me take a small uh, example to illustrate the same let me use a spreadsheet let's say i have uh, i am planning to borrow a principal of 500000 uh, at a prevailing uh, interest rate per year interest rate per year let me assume it as 6% and i want to borrow 
number of years i want to borrow at for 30 years now if i want to find out the emi the equal monthly installment because we are talking about one a fixed rate level payment that level payment is what i call as equal monthly installment so i can use the pmt function which can give me that scenario yeah the only thing now is instead of taking an interest rate of 6% per year i take it as 6% by 12 which is 0.5% per year and the number of years number of periods instead of taking it as 30 years i'll take it as 360 months and the loan amount stands to be 500000 so this says that uh, i should pay close to 3000 bucks 3000 dollars 2997.75 dollars every period to make sure that my loan gets repaid at the end of 30 years the loan gets completely repaid off and in this process if i want to know what is the contribution to the interest and the principal every month okay right from month number 1 to i have 360 months in this right so let me take it uh, for the entire 360 months okay i'm taking this numbers for the entire 360 months all right here i would like to find out the principal part of this loan and i would like to know the interest part of course if i want to find out uh, the interest part it is straight forward whatever is the principal that is outstanding the way we make a schedule okay initial principal for the first month let me call it as beginning principal principal at the beginning of the period so on that some interest is being paid and uh, principal repayment and ending principal this is how i make a schedule so the beginning principal probably is 500000 the interest which i am paying on it is whatever is the beginning principal that is there i pay 6% by 12 that is the interest that is being paid for it and if i want to know but i am paying a emi of minus 2997 so the remaining 497 is going towards the principal repayment so i am subtracting the interest portion from it this is saying that this is going towards a principal repayment which means my principal is getting reduced by this much amount so my at the end of the first month the outstanding principal from my side is 4499502 dollars thus that becomes the beginning principal for the next period and let me see if this works out now if i am dragging it yes this is the interest repayment this is the principal repayment so my principal is coming out to this level now when i drag this across go down you see by the end of the 360th month the principal that is outstanding is zero this particular table is what we call as the amortization schedule this particular table is what we generally classify as amortization table 
a schedule containing the principal as well as the interest repayments of a tradition of, of any kind of a loan now a few things from this what we are seeing is for these kind of securities the in principal initially it is much lesser but as the time period is increasing the principal is increasing gradually whereas the interest is decreasing gradually and so these are the two important uh, things that are there and along with that these mortgages generally charge a servicing fee which is primarily used to cover the administration costs <clears throat> some kind of documentations and some such kind of costs along with a collection cost because on a regular basis in case uh, the interest and the principal repayments uh, do not happen giving some calls or uh, sending uh, persons all these things come as a part of a, a servicing cost or servicing fee generally some this kind of job is outsourced to some third parties also who charge a kind of a servicing fee for making sure that they are collecting all the payments from the all the borrowers on time and uh, this is this rate is generally built into the mortgage rate itself so if i when i said probably the 6% is the mortgage uh, 6% is the mortgage rate it may uh, probably if uh, 0.25% is the servicing fee probably uh, the actual uh, mortgage part of it is only 5.75% whereas 0.25% is purely for the servicing part 